In this video, I'm going to show you kind of an interesting problem, a bit of a strange problem, but also a really cool one. I'm going to show you how to solve Laplace's equation in toroidal coordinates. Now, initially the equation appears not separable, and directly it isn't, but there's a special onsatz you can insert in it that turns it into one, which is surprising and very cool. So what I do is I show you that onsatz, and then I insert it and work through the algebra of deriving a separable equation from that, and then I separate variables on it, and we solve it out. It's a good exercise, it's important to know about this problem, and it's also fun. So hopefully you'll find this video useful. Here follows all of the math. If we aim to solve Laplace's equation in toroidal coordinates for the toroidal harmonics, we first need the Laplacian in toroidal coordinates. I've calculated this in a previous video using covariant derivatives and the three-space Euclidean metric in toroidal coordinates, but I've also just written it right here and you can look it up quite easily. So setting that equal to zero gives Laplace's equation. We can divide out this factor, which gets us here. This equation as it is, is not separable. However, miraculously, there is an onsatz that can turn it into a separable equation. There are actually two different ones, in fact. The most common one is the one that I have used here in this problem, and it's simply this. Let's insert this and see what happens. First, the derivatives of the phi field become this. Inserting those gives us this. We can then multiply these factors through to get this mess. Then we can distribute the derivative through to get this. Then we can strategically use the product rule and rewrite the equation like this. I haven't fully taken advantage of the product rule to expand out the things these derivatives are applied to as much as I could. I've done it strategically just so that we got these cancellations explicitly. This leaves us with this equation. The next thing that I did was I multiplied by this denominator here. That gave me this equation after rearranging some terms and factoring out this square root from the two terms where it didn't cancel. So now the next task is going to be to simplify what's in this bracket. To make this easier, I defined a symbol omega that's equal to it, in which case the equation becomes this, so that now we can just focus on simplifying omega. We see that it's got these two derivatives in it, so we can just use the product rule to compute those. We get these, so now we can manipulate them so that they have common denominators, and then we can combine the fractions given the common denominators. Then from there we can plug this back into omega and we get this result. Now we can combine these fractions because they have common denominators. That gives us this. We can combine like terms. It simplifies down to this. Then we can apply these two trig identities, giving this. And then combining like terms simplifies it down quite a lot. Then we can unsquare it to get this. So then we finally find, after canceling what we can between the numerator and denominator, that we have this value for omega. We can then insert this back into the equation, and we see we've got a nice cancellation between these square roots, and we arrive at this separable equation. This is the separable equation that I mentioned earlier that can be obtained by plugging the onsatz I gave at the beginning into Laplace's equation in toroidal coordinates. So now let's separate variables. We have this standard onsatz for doing that. We can plug it in. I separated off the phi piece here first. It's just solved by phases. The sigma piece is also just solved by phases. However, the tau piece is definitely not. However, we can write down exact solutions for it quite easily because this is a relatively well-known version of the associated Legendre equation. Its solutions are simply given by this. So therefore, the full general solution to the Laplace's equation in toroidal coordinates can simply be written as this. Now this problem is really cool because it's exactly solvable and also it's an equation that isn't immediately separable, but plugging in that first onsatz can get algebraically tricky. The steps that you need to take aren't that hard, but figuring out exactly which steps to take can be tricky and also performing them without making a single mistake can be tricky. So hopefully the fact that I wrote it out in extreme detail will help you. If this video did help you, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. D-Trick out.